Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about combined transformations. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. Okay, combining transformations. Well, so far we've learned many different types of transformations, and so now we're going to go through some examples of bringing them all together. But before we do, we have some definitions here. Combining transformations. When combining vertical transformations written in the form a times f of x plus k, first vertically stretch by a, then vertically shift by k. When combining horizontal transformations written in the form f of bx minus h, first horizontally shift by h and then horizontally stretch by 1 over b. When combining horizontal transformations written in the form f of b times x minus h, in parentheses there, First horizontally stretch by 1 over b, and then horizontally shift by h. Horizontal and vertical transformations are independent. It does not matter whether horizontal or vertical transformations are performed first. Okay? So let's go dive into an example here. All right. So we're given the function f of x by this table. And we want to not find, find, that's what happens when I write a g and then a g. g of x equals 2 times f of 3x plus 1. So we're going to break this down by steps here. Let's first put a final table for x over, or it's not x over, first part's x, f of 3x. Let's we'll start from the inside here. So the same uh, input values here, or not input values, the same output values, 10, 14, combining what we've learned so far, 15, and 17, we see that we have a value of 3 here. So we're going to take the input values and multiply them by 1 third here. So 6 times 1 third is a 2, okay? 12 times 1 third is a 4. 18 times 1 third is a 6. And 24 times 1 third is an 8. All right. So we have the first part here, f of 3x. Let's keep this going. What about x? And then the next part is going to f of 3x, okay? So we're partway there, partway there, 2 times f of 3x. So we have that table there. We're going to use that and multiply the outputs now by 2. Inputs are 2, 4, 6, 8. And the outputs doubled, 20, 28, 30, and 34. Okay, we double those. We're transitioning from here, this table, to this one, applying a little bit more. And lastly, we just have to add a 1 to complete g of x. So we have x here, and moving down. And then g of x, which is 2 f of 3x plus 1. So in this case, we're keeping the same input values in the previous part, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then from there we add 1 to the output, 21, 29, 31, and 35. And now we have a table here for g of x given our original table, which is f of x. And some of these steps were a little confusing, you wondered specifically why, you know, I multiply it by one third here. Um, on the input. Look at our previous video. We kind of talked about that stuff here. We're just showing examples of it all together. All right. Let me erase this and we're going to go into our next example, which is a graph. All right. So we have our function f of x here and its graph. And we're going to find a triple transformation of a graph. Uh, we want to find in graph now k of x, which is shown as f of 1 half x plus 1 minus 3. So that's our graph f of x here. Well, before I get more into it, I want to have a little value here. I want to find some factor that goes on everything on the inside there. So I can write, rewrite this out, okay, the inside part, right? I can pull out of 1 half. So we have f of 1 half here. And now we have x plus 2 when you pull out that 1 half from the 1, we have a 2. Again, if you need to question it, multiply it back in, you can see how we got that there. Well, how is that useful? 
Now it's in the form multiplied out that we can see that this graph here is being stretched by a factor of two. Okay, so stretched by a factor of two horizontally, so horizontal stretch by two. And we can see that in the graph. Okay, see so it's stretched out by two. Then the plus two right there, the plus two in the inside, okay, shows that plus two in the inside, so the plus two shows a horizontal shift shift to the left, two units. So we can see that in the graph now. It's shifted to the left, two units there, and we can kind of see it more by the endpoints there. All right, so we have the one half taken care of and the plus two care taken care of. We have the minus three. The minus of those points here. Minus three here. The minus three tells us we have a vertical shift in our graph, and our vertical shift indicates that it's going down. Vertical shift down three units, okay? So we can see that there, the graph has moved now down three units, and we're done, we're done. We have all of k of x there, shown in our graph, by going through these three steps. The tricky part here is bringing that one half on the outside. I find it helpful there to, to do that, um, but that's how we can get our graph. We got our final graph right there, that transformation. So I hope you learned something here on how to combine transformations. Uh, if you did, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math, when you need help to use minute math. Minute math, minute math, when you need help to use minute math. MinuteMathTutor.com